Please welcome Secretary of the United States Department of Health and Human Services, Xavier Bercera. Thank you and good afternoon. I hope you've had a good session so far. I hear the President was here, Vice President, uh, a few of the Secretaries. I hope that this has been fruitful for you and uh, I'm looking forward. I believe uh, some of you will join me for a breakout session afterwards. So we'll have an opportunity to get more into some of these things. May I just say that uh, I hope that you will encourage your colleagues to always come when the opportunity arises to Washington, DC. We need to see you often. There are a number of issues that we're dealing with that impact you directly and certainly those that are, for example, in the jurisdiction of HHS with regard to the Indian Health Services, immediate impact. And so we hope that you will always have an opportunity to come, voice your interests and concerns, but more than that, uh, hear from us on the things that we're trying to do on behalf of Indian country overall. So to each and every one of you as leaders of tribal nations throughout this land, I wanna say thank you for the time that you are spending with us today. Uh, I certainly believe that at HHS we have a lot to talk about with you. Certainly as the first department to actually gather an official committee to discuss affairs that are important to tribal nations through our secretarial-led uh, tribal advisory committee, which I believe is the gold standard and is now used by most of the departments in the president's cabinet to consult with tribal nations. I hope that those who are on our stack uh, are able to share with you the work that we are doing. But let me just mention a few of the things that at HHS we continue to work on that I hope you will continue to be there with us to work on as well. And I hope during our breakout sessions we have a chance to go into these. I have to start with advanced appropriations in the budget process because as you know today, there was a very strong chance that today we wouldn't be meeting because we would have had a government that was shut down and we would not have the opportunity to be here. Fortunately, Congress did come up with a short-term solution. As you know, the continuing resolution that was signed takes us into January, February before we go through this entire exercise all over again. But had we shut down, we wouldn't be doing this with you because we wouldn't have the authority to stand up here and speak to you with a government that would have been shut down. We have fought since this president took office to not have programs like Indian Health Services, which services close to two and a half million individuals from Indian country every year. Indian Health Services would have to shut down along with the federal government, regardless of the health severity of the people that they treat. Because those uh, monies that we get for Indian Health Services are discretionary dollars and therefore depend on Congress to pass a budget every year. So every time there's talk about a budget shutdown, it's not just a budget shutdown, it's a shutdown of healthcare services in Indian country. We have fought to convert the money that Indian Health Services gets from discretionary dollars to mandatory dollars. So that never again is there the consideration of shutting down health services for families in need simply because politics is going up on the hill. We didn't quite get there last year, but what we did get what's called advanced appropriations, which means we get the money in advance, a year in advance, so that even if the government shuts down this month, we've got the money for Indian Health Services for the whole year. And we intend to continue that fight. Thank you. We intend to continue that fight. And so not once did we have to tell someone, we have to close the doors, we can't have your child come in and get health services from that doctor. And that's what we have to do. We hope that what we can do is establish that not only must we have the advanced appropriations, but we must have it be mandatory funding. So there's never a question. Just the way Medicaid receives its dollars, it doesn't worry about a political government shutdown, it gets its dollars. So should health care services that are done in our Indian Health Services centers. We did that. We've also broken ground on something that I think is almost as important, 13 new facilities, health facilities, that are now uh, in the process of being built in Indian country to serve uh, the people that you represent, that you're fighting for. Those 13 centers, uh, health centers, I hope will be opening sooner than later so we can continue to provide expanded healthcare services. 
at HHS, we added two additional tribes to our IHS, Indian Health Services Tribal Self-Governance Program. So these are tribes, as you know, who are trying to do a lot of the work themselves and let their government decide. And we've just added a couple more. We're now up to about 380 tribes that are part of that program. We've invested more money, about $92 million is going to help increase the number of nurses in health services that are provided uh, in Indian country. We're providing more money, several million dollars more for loan forgiveness for those who are going into health services uh, in Indian country. We're gonna to continue to make those kinds of investments because the president has fought to secure some of those dollars in the budget to make that possible. We secured another 15, 18 million dollars, I think it was, for 988, I hope everyone is aware of 988. It is 911 for health, mental health services, substance use disorder support. If you or someone you know is having going through a crisis, 988. Well, we have set up a distinct line that goes for those who are coming from uh, Indian country so that they can get serviced directly by someone who will know how to best provide for their needs if they call 988. We've, uh, pumped in some more money so we could try to expand those services uh, on 988 for Indian country. We developed the first ever federal survey of native language vitality. I spoke about this sometime last year. To me, being able to not just retain, but to memorialize language is critical. And I know to many of you where that native language is disappearing, it becomes even more important when you're losing the people who can actually speak it fluently, and it's become very difficult to pass it on through generations, we have to fight to make sure that we keep that heritage. And so we are investing resources to help make sure that we never forget our roots. And I hope that you will help us ensure that that program is supported in Congress so we're able to continue to support your efforts to maintain that heritage. We've updated our tribal consultation policy, oftentimes we'll hear, we, we heard about this too late, or you didn't include our tribe in the process. And so we, what we have done in consultation with members of our, our stack and other tribes as we meet with them is to try to expand our consultative process, listening to what you've said, so we can make sure that whenever you all do meet with us, we're working based on a partnership with you on what needs to be done. And then I'll finally close by mentioning the $3.5 billion over the next five years that we will be investing in sanitation infrastructure in Indian country. That is to improve the water services, to make sure that what you are able to provide to the families that live in your nation will be safe, potable, and direct. And so those investments are now being made about 700 million of that this coming year. We're gonna need your help because that's the biggest investment Indian country has ever seen in that type of water infrastructure ever. And we gotta make sure it's done right. And so please help us make sure that we've got the right contractors doing the work and that the development is going the way it's supposed to and that it's being used as quickly as possible to get that service up and running. Those are some of the things that we're working on. I was just fortunate to be not that long ago in South Dakota, and I had an opportunity to meet with a number of leaders in my stack committee. We had an opportunity to speak about any number of very important issues. It was interesting because when we were there in the land of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota, we learned something very important. There are communities are being missed because they are so rural in nature. And while we have always worked, especially at IHS, in reaching out to communities and families in rural areas, we often miss some of the most important elements of what has to get done. Having brought virtually my entire team of leaders from HHS, from CDC, NIH, FDA, you name it, we had them there. And I'm not saying the subordinates, I'm saying the directors, we were able to have that communication directly with so many of the tribal leaders from across the country and certainly from our stack. We intend to use that consultative process and certainly our stack to make sure that we continue to, to do what we can to be there and meet the needs of Indian country. I could go on, but I'm gonna stop because I know we were running a little late 
and I'm going to have an opportunity at our breakout session to go into some of the details on these things. But what I hope you'll remember is that what we're doing, we're not doing because it feels good or because we're lucky we got some resource and we're not doing it out there. This is an obligation. We have an obligation that was put to us under the Constitution of the United States. And when I look at you, I'm not just looking at a community. I am looking at sovereign leaders. And it is my obligation under the laws and the Constitution of the United States of America to be responsive to a sovereign leader who under our Constitution has a standing of the United States of America. And so please recognize Please recognize that what we do, we must do together. When we invest, we must invest together. When we fall, we will fall together. But if we do this right, when we pick ourselves up, not only will we do it together, but we will do it better. Thank you very much for having me. Look forward to seeing you at the breakout session. <laughs>